Hello students, this is Professor Vicente Saya. Welcome to my class. This is the presentation of part seven of chapter 16. Dilutive securities and earnings per share. Now, let's take a look at, uh, we are still talking about uh, how to compute uh, EPS in a complex capital structure. Let's take a look at uh, two interesting issues here relative to EPS computation. Uh, options and warrants. Recall, at the beginning of the chapter, we talk about uh, those securities that have a potential to dilute or downgrade EPS. And we talk about different examples of uh, dilutive uh, securities. So we already talk about uh, a bond and uh, convertible bonds. We said that uh, when those bonds are converted to uh, common stock, as we illustrated, we noted that the company was not actually was not getting a, a cash from the bondholder. They are just changing their bond or converting their bond into common stock. So we use what method did we use? We use the if converted method, meaning if those bonds are converted, uh, what will be uh, the impact? But here, these convertible securities, options and warrants, are slightly different. Why? Because options and warrants give the right to the holder to purchase the company stock. So the difference here is when those options and warrant holders exercise their right, then the company is going to receive X amount of dollars from them uh, when they purchase the common stock of the company. So that's the uh, little uh, twist to diluted EPS in connection with uh, options and warrants. Like I said, this is even more exciting than the last uh, two uh, 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 presentations or three presentations relative to complex capital uh, structure. So let's take a look at how this works. So here we measure the dilutive effect of potential conversion using the treasury stock method. Now, how do they come up with this name, treasury stock method? So the assumption here is that the investor that is holding on to these options or warrants like I explained to you earlier, exercise their right to buy the company stock. So when they exercise that right, they have to pay for the stock that they are, are, are purchasing. So now, for the calculation of diluted EPS, this is all assumption that the options and warrant holders are going to exercise their right. It's an assumption. It's really not true. Then we have to follow through with that assumption that if that is the case, the cash that the company received, if they exercise their right and by buy the company stock, what do we do with that cash? So we are going to assume that we use that cash, against an assumption, that we use that cash to purchase the company's stock in the stock market. Okay, remember, when the company go out and purchase the stock in the financial market or in the stock market, what do we call that? Treasury stock. So that is how they came up with the name of the method that we use when we take uh, 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 options and warrants into consideration in calculating a diluted EPS. So we call this treasury stock method. So this method met, uh, assumes the exercise uh, the, the exercise the options or warrants at the beginning of the year or date of issue if later and that the company uses those proceeds like I explained to purchase common stock for the treasury. Excuse me for a minute. So uh, moving along, let's take a look at the illustration of everything that we just discussed. Z company's net income for 2014 is 40,000. The only potentially dilutive securities outstanding were 1,000 options issued during 2013 and each exercisable for one share of $8. 
none has been exercised and 10,000 shares of common were outstanding during 2014. The average market price of the stock during 2014 was $20. So we are now to compute diluted EPS. Now, here's the assumption. We are going to assume that the 1,000 options were issued on October 1st, 2014, rather than in 2013. The average market price during the last three months of 2014 was $20. So keep that in mind, and let's take a look at how all these pieces uh, fit uh, uh, together. Now, the treasury stock method, we are going to assume that 1,000 exercise at eight. So we are expecting $8,000 cash from the holder of the option or warrant. Again, this is just uh, an assumption that if they exercise, then we'll be getting $8,000. Now, we are going to use the $8,000 to buy back our common stock in the stock market. If we do that, the purchase price of trading stock is uh, $20. So we are told that the average uh, stock price during the year uh, is $20. So we divide uh, 8,000 by 20. So we are looking at about uh, 400 shares assumed to be purchased. So if we purchase 400 shares from the open market from the assumed proceed or cash that we receive, and we also indicated that that will result in issuing 1,000 shares. Guess what? The incremental share increase is now only $600. So for the calculation of the computation of diluted EPS, we can only take uh, 600 shares into consideration because the assumption is we issued 1,000 shares, we bought back 400 shares based on the 800 thousand dollars that we should have received and then we have to take that into consideration so let's take a look at how this works out again in computing diluted eps the first thing is we have to compute the basic eps very straightforward forty thousand net income divided by ten thousand uh, dollars uh, outstanding common stock so we have a basic eps of four dollars now let's take a look at the twist see the $600, excuse me, the 600 additional shares, we have the denominator uh, uh, modified. So that, th those are the 600 additional shares uh, from the options. So if you do the math, you now come up with uh, $3.77 seven, $3 as diluted EPS. as diluted uh, EPS. Okay, so moving along, as you can see, uh, basic EPS is 4, diluted EPS 3.77. Again, the potential investor looking at your financial statement now realize that yes, EPS is, uh, and its share is uh, $4. However, uh, potentially it could be 3.77 if those uh, convertible securities uh, we are converted or in this case uh, if the uh, preferred stocks uh, uh, excuse me the options and the warrants uh, we uh, actually exercise so let's take a look at this example or examine this example uh, a, a little bit further now we are going to twist it here that uh, we are going to compute diluted EPS as only 1000 options were issued on October 1st so instead of at the beginning of the year, the assumption now is uh, those options uh, were issued on October uh, 1st. So let's do the uh, uh, math again. Again, 8,000, 20, 40. Now, look at Wait for three months, assuming outstanding uh, October 1st. So October, November, December, three months. So 312 of 600, uh, 312 multiplied by 600, that will give us 150. So in this case, the weighted incremental shares increase is 150. So again, for the complex capitals, the diluted EPS, if we, oops, uh, to compute the diluted EPS, we now have additional or incremental 150 shares, and that uh, 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 modified the numerator, and we now have a diluted uh, EPS of uh, $3.94 
versus basic EPS of uh, four dollars. Now, additional issues that uh, 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 we need to know here: uh, contingent uh, issue uh, uh, agreement. So, contingent shares are issued as a result of passage of time condition upon attainment of a certain earnings or market uh, price level. In other words, these are uh, shares that are going to be issued in the in the future contingent upon something happening or not happening. All right. So yeah, is anti dilution dilution revisited again? Like I uh, indicated earlier, uh, the rule is when you have anti dilutive EPS, then you ignore the securities in all calculations and the computed diluted EPS per share. So you don't report it. You just only report the basic uh, EPS. EPS presentation and disclosure, companies should uh, 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 show per share amount. So these are the pertinent things you have to disclose as part of your notes, uh, 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 as part of your disclosures or notes to the financial statements. The income from continuing operations, income from uh, before extraordinary items and earning income, and of course you have to compute the EPS for each uh, segment like we discussed earlier. So per share amounts for a discontinued operation or an extraordinary item should be presented on the face of the income statement or in the notes, or as part of the notes to the financial uh, statement. So, uh, additional uh, issues that need to be uh, 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 disclosed. So, I think uh, that would do it uh, for Chapter 16, Dilutive Securities and Earnings uh, Per Share.